to be skillful around the bouncer because it sounds away really fast. So uh, yeah, just be gentle on that. One done. Get on with that one. seal this, then do the water test. Right. I've mixed up some uh, clear, well it doesn't have to be clear, but uh, two, two part, two pack resin. Um, spray this. Well, I'm not going to bother with that. I'm just going to uh, sort of dip the lettuce and uh, dip the lettuce and uh, hope for the best. Well, not hope for the best. It does work. I've done it before. Silly monkey. Here you go. soaking so uh, I'm tying these up the hook placement, this hook placement, that, that, that creates a lot of drag. Now if you want this lure to go down by itself, ideally you want to place it a bit more forward. The more forward you go, the more it's going to pull that nose down. Um, so for now we'll leave it like this. Oh, there you go. Basically like that. So it's like a wedge stretched. Um, and I hope you can see that. So that uh, you can stretch it across the area of the lure. In other words, you'll you'll still have more weight to the front, but you you're stretching at in other words uh, that weight over a further bigger area, and uh, it should help with gas stability. We need a clear bucket, really. Um, still lots of adjustment there, but that already sinks 100% better. Now, there's a lot to consider here. 
There's a lot to consider here. Yeah. That piano hook. Get this up. Oops. That uh, belly hook, this drag, the flat face, the shape, the tail hook, which acts like a drogue, it all affects how this lure is going to swim. The only way to obviously see what it, the result's going to be is to chuck it in the water. Chuck it and, and see how it, how it goes. Basically, force an issue, and I like it's working. And quite frankly, if I put this in the bucket, it drops, but it wants to float backwards. Interesting, pretty interesting. Yeah, so that there you are. I've, I've done it with the other one as well. Straight to lay out, panels that goes down nice, nice and flat. And it feels uh, feels like it might get a bit of distance, not not massive, but it'll be okay. Not uh, not in the bin just yet. Yesterday I uh, made up the counterweights for these lures, um, shaped them like I showed. They're in place now. All I need to do is get them fitted like I've done here. Um, Dremel. This one just sits nice, nice in the hand. So it's, it's lovely. So uh, that's what I like to use. So uh, basically, that's the result there. Uh, that's the result. Grooved, lids in place. All it needs is the glues. Um, I've made up some uh, balsa wood filler to go in with the. To pack a epoxy resin, which is where? Uh, somewhere here. We'll find it. Um, yeah. So uh, get on with it and uh, get them all made up so I can glue them in. When I find the glue, we can get on with life. That's when I can find it. <laughs> yes, I've made ah, but. <coughs> There you go, two ton epoxy resin, don't mess around. This is waterproof, really, really good. It's in a glue, it's a glue, it's not a, some guys use it as a final finish on the lure. What a nonsense. Stuff goes brown after a while, but fantastic glue. You know, it's, it does exactly what it says on the packet. Can't go wrong with it. Right, I'll chat to you in a bit. Um, I would suggest when you do this, this, make a mark on the lid so you know where, which way around you want it or, you know, because, you know, making these things up by hand, there's no way that they're ever going to be a hundred percent as in perfectly square or rectangle or whatever you want to call it. Um, so yeah, you want to put it in the way you finished off so right let me show you how I go about it <coughs> a little groove cutter or wheel cutter that I use <coughs> bit of foam protection for my knee just in case I want to cut my leg off um, idea. Um, the reason I do this is because I hate the whole idea of boring lead. I mean, you, I can't think of anything more dangerous. Guys have done it. A slight bit of moisture. Thing explodes in their face, you could lose an eye. Um, and it's just 
why mess around with lead if you don't have to you know uh, heating the stuff up is when there's a lot of gases and poisons getting released beating it about with a hammer well it's just the same as the old piece of lead it was over there um, don't mess around with it too much it shouldn't bite you in the butt up a bit makes it easier to work with I'll just use bits of old heavy duty foil obviously once you've got it all glued and you're gonna have to re retest it check it in the book and make sure it still sits the way you wanted it to sit uh, you might have to remove some in these simple ways small drill bit you just drill out bits of lead and then fill it up again again after so here we go, <clears throat> get on with it. Uh, adding the balsa sawdust in here just, just makes the glue a little bit more buoyant. And yeah, so uh, got to clear this. Like I said, that's where we will go. I've come small on these, these are size 4's, these are size 2's, um, quite large, bit of an overkill and under that size, personally, that's just my opinion. Very simple spinning setup, microwave motor, adjustable bolt, swivel on that end, fix, fixture on that side, works really nice. This is what I use. I won't use this as a final finish, I use it to strengthen my timbers and to give it a base, a nice strong base, um, hopefully it doesn't chip through, because once wood, you know, chips down to the wood, um, even though you've treated it, there's, there's a good chance of rot. And don't over apply, you know, it's so easy to do. That's it, done for the next four hours then I'll put the next coat to uh, set in eight hours cures, cures in yeah. 36 properly or 24 so cures properly in 24 um, but after four hours you can do your next coat what's in the pocket must be tacky but mustn't stick to your finger um, that's when the next coat on, otherwise it doesn't bond you know, properly and you end up with uh, layers which delaminate. Um, Yeah, they done. There you go.